I'm Yukino and I'm Taki. We chose bullying as a topic. The reason we chose bullying is because bullying is a problem that's occurring nowadays and everyone is familiar with it. So here we go. Okay, so what is bullying in the first place? Bullying is an unwanted aggressive behavior among school-aged children that involves a real or perceived power imbalance. Both kids who are bullied and who bully others may have a serious lasting problem. In order to be considered bullying, the behavior must be aggressive and include the, an imbalance of power. Kids who bully use their power, such as physical strength, access to embarrassing information or popularity, to control or harm others, and repetition. Bullying behaviors happen more than once or have the potential to happen more than once. We took a survey asking the question, why do you think people bully? 30% answered that the reason is because they dislike the person. 50% answered because of jealousy. And 20% answered to take their anger out of the person. There are three main types of bullying. Verbal bullying, social bullying, and physical bullying. Verbal bullying is saying or writing mean things. It includes name calling and teasing. Social bullying, sometimes referred as relational bullying, involves hurting someone's reputation or relationship. It includes leaving someone out on purpose and spreading rumors about someone. Physical bullying involves hurting a person's body or possessions. It involves hitting, kicking, and taking or breaking someone's things. We took a survey asking the question, what type of bullying do you know? 35% answered verbal bullying, 50% answered social bullying, and 50% answered physical bullying. So now, let me explain the difference of bullying between gender and country. First of all, let me explain the difference between country. Please look at this graph. This graph shows the frequency of different types of bullying in four countries. Japan, Britain, Netherlands, and Norway. In all these four countries, name calling and teasing is the most common types of bullying. Also, you can see how Japan is the most likely country to leave someone out when bullying. And many people in Netherlands are more likely to bully people by spreading rumors. Like this, the common way they bully is different in each country. Therefore, it is important for us to be aware of the types of bullying to deal with this global problem. Next, let me explain the difference between gender. There is significant difference in how boys bully versus how girls bully. Boys tend to be physically aggressive when bullying. Therefore, it is easier to recognize when boys are getting bullied. On the other hand, girls tend to bully other girls indirectly through the peer groups, so it is difficult to notice the bullying happening. Look at these two graphs. The first graph shows the percentage of bully reported by each gender. You can see how bullying related to boys are reported more than girls. Now, look at the second graph. This graph illustrates the percentage of cyberbullying reported by each gender. You can see how many girls experience cyberbullying, bullied in indirect way, than men. As the graph shows, we don't usually think or recognize about it, but there is a slight difference between gender when bullying happens. This difference between gender is seen in the school where a lot of bullying happens. But it is possible for you to notice in the workplace because bullying also happens in workplace. Let me introduce you one interesting data. This shows the result of the US workplace bullying survey done by Workplace Bullying Institution. It suggests how there are more male bullies than female, but more female are targeted as victims of bully compared to men. So, what problems do you think will happen because of bullying? 
We did a survey and asked this question. Some answers to, some answers to this question were trauma, suicide, accident, school avoidance, mental disorder, and so on. Then I would like to talk about the effects of bullying in more detail. There are short-term and long-term effects. I will explain, first of all, the short-term. There are short-term effects such as social isolation, lack of sleep, low self-esteem, changes in eating habits, higher risk of illness, such as stomach aches and headaches. Whereas in long-term effects, there are depression, increased risk of suicidal thoughts, suicide plan, and suicide attempts, stress disorder, anxiety disorder, poor general health, and lastly, self-destructive behavior, including self-harm. Let me share the witness accounts and experiences for our research. For the question, have you ever experienced bullying? 40% answered yes, and about 57% no, and 3% kept silent. And for the question, have you seen people getting bullied? 60% answered Yes, 40% answered no. When I asked for their experiences, the most common answer was they were left out from the group. It was because he was a transfer student or she had different opinion in the group. And for the witness account, the most common one was that they saw someone spreading bad rumors some said a specific one was targeted by bullies, and others said there was a person who talked behind friends' back, even they are good friends. These experiences and witness accounts brought about a result that more than a half answered spreading bad rumors and more than one third leaving somebody out for the question, which type of bullying do you think is most common in Japan? Now, let's move on to the interview. We asked Professor Mike for his song and his friend's song about bullying in Japanese schools. Um, okay, yeah, like I was saying there, I, um, my son has never really experienced bullying because he's, uh, I think because he looks Japanese and he's, he's not that different, right? And he's very tall, so it's kind of hard to pick on him because he's big. Um, and he has a lot of friends and he's popular. Um, but I, I do know of other half students who have experienced bullying. Um, this one friend of mine was Russian and his, his son was blonde with blue eyes, half Japanese but looked more Russian. And he, in, in kindergarten, uh, he had to, he was being bullied and then in first grade in, uh, in elementary school, it, he was getting bullied again, the boy, and it was so bad that uh, my friend had to go with his wife to the principal of the school and tell the principal, please, can you do something to help my son? He's, he's coming home, he's crying, he's sad, he's getting bullied. So the principal actually did a really good job of talking to the other students, uh, the other kids, saying, stop it, you know, stop bullying this boy, he's, you know, he shouldn't be doing that. So that was really good. So that was a real voice for bullying in Japan. And we can find out that victims of bullying may have common characteristics. Here are four characteristics that make someone more likely to be a victim of bullying. One, insecure personality. Children who act submissively and anxiously are more likely to be bullied than children who does not have those tendencies. Those children also tend to be insecure and to cry often, even before the bullying begins. 2. Lower peer acceptance. 
bullying victims perceived poorly by peers and may have experienced peer rejection or is often left out of social situations. They tend to eat alone at lunch table or have no or few friends. 3. Different in some way. As Professor Mike said in the interview, children who are different from others more likely to be victims. Children with obvious physical or mental issues, or even who stand out for being smart, who came from a different cultural background, who are new to a school, can be singled out by bullies. 4. Physically weak. Being physically weaker at first glance than peers also seems to put a child at increased risk of being bullied. In other words, kids who are shorter, tighter, or less muscular than peers. Thank you for watching! Yay! <laughs>